Welcome to Lead Today with me, Kalina. Let's talk leadership. This episode would not be possible without Anchor. It's free and the easiest way to make a podcast. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Here we are for the second episode in the career development series. Today we're talking about identity, arguably the most important thing personally at least. Also for your brand, you want a brand identity if you're building a business. So no matter what it is that you're up to in your work, this is going to be good. Just a reminder that any support that you can give in regards to liking, writing a review, subscribing to this show makes a huge difference to my ability to be able to continue to produce it for you. So if you're feeling super generous, then I would invite you to click the link in the show notes to donate a cup of coffee or more to help me continue doing the show. Today, I have a ginger turmeric tea with some local honey. So thank you to Sarah for her donation, making it possible for me to have this wonderful tea by my side today. Okay. Identity. Well, as you remember from last time, if you listened, if you haven't, maybe go back to one episode before this so you can get started on the Logical Levels series. This is important because it helps you map out any project, brand, or most importantly, your own personal career trajectory. It's super important when you're working day in and day out to know where it is you're headed, why, and to feel like you're in the driver's seat. Whether or not you hit bumps and curves along the way, It's good to feel like you're in control, at least to feel that you're behind the wheel. Um, There's so much in life and in our careers we don't control. So when it comes to our mindset, our inner clarity, finding focus, I think it's super important to get that under control because it is what's in our realm to decide upon, right? How am I going to approach this? What do I think about this? How do I want to move forward? What can I learn from what I've done before? And so as I've told you, there are six levels and today is level two identity. As I reminded you last week was purpose or vision. So if you haven't done that yet, just go back and check it out. So when it comes to identity, this is important for you. If maybe you're doubting yourself, whether it's your role in work or maybe it's related to purpose, you're sort of questioning, right? Who am I? And maybe feeling not good enough as a result of the answer you're giving to that question. So you're feeling confused about who am I and feeling inadequate or like you're avoiding things, either the job, the role that you've been given, um, or certain parts of your job or certain parts of your life. And it's sort of coming in at the identity level from my understanding of it. Because when you are confronted with a challenge of some sort, whether it's a financial challenge, a relational challenge, a physical challenge, you have a choice on how you respond to it. And a big part of how you respond to it is who you believe yourself to be. The work that um, actually James Clear did with Atomic Habits, I find to be fascinating in this regard because he talks about building habits in relation to identity. That's his main sort of thesis, if you will, in, in my understanding of his work, which is, okay, if you want to be you know, a runner, you want to lose 20 pounds, you want to be successful executive, like whoever it is that you want to be or the things that you want to have or the places you want to see or any of that, you've got to believe yourself to be somebody that's competent or successful or a runner or a traveler. You've got to believe yourself to be that person in order to feel resourceful enough to actually go and do that. Because we're still in the upper levels of logical levels, right? So we're not talking about your tangible skills. We're not talking about if you have the degree, the credential, the certification. That's not where we're at yet. We'll get there in uh, episode four of this series. We'll get there. But right now we're talking about who do I believe myself to be, right? What's my identity? It's something that 
I guess traditionally we talk about sort of that teenage level where we're kind of reckoning with ourselves and you dye your hair red or you get a new piercing or you kind of want to rebel. It's like this pushing of boundaries to understand, okay, where do I fit in the social continuum? Who do I want to show up as? And I don't think that stops. I think we push it in our teenage years, but I don't know that it really stops because once you find your identity within your social circle in school, you go off to university, you find that kind of identity within academia or within an internship or your first job after high school, you're finding, okay, who am I in relation to everybody else around me in this broader society? High school was this drop in the bucket compared to who I am now in relation to, you know, thousands and millions of people in my city or town. So, and then if you get married or you, you know, you go into parenthood and you have kids, it's like your identity continues to shift throughout your life as do all of the elements of logical levels. So by no means are we trying to pin down who you are today um, in the way that I think many traditional personality assessments do. That's really against uh, what I believe to be true when it comes to identifying your person, well, your personality or your identity. I think that there are assessments that look at ocean, for example, like the the five big five personality traits, openness to experience, extroversion, um, conscientiousness, agreeableness, and neuroticism. Jordan Peterson's work delves into that, but lots of psychologists look at those big five dimensions. Then it's not to say that those aren't reliable indicators and that they can't at least give you some and cling into what your tendencies are. I think that that's great. What I'm trying to say is that I don't think that you should pigeonhole yourself based off of those dimensions, for example, or any dimensions. Just because you are you don't score high on extroversion or you score low on eroticism or you're very conscientious, I think there's more to the equation. And what I'm trying to get at when it comes to identity is not on the personality level. We're talking purely your relationship to yourself. If you're bringing this to let's say a work situation that you got going on. So like you're trying to build your own business, then the way I would utilize this step is to say, okay, the identity of the brand, right? But similarly, right? Who am I? Who is this brand? Like, who are we? It's the same sort of deal where you want to understand, okay, we're like, if you were to break down Nike, for example, right? As a brand, it's like, okay, what comes to mind, right? Who's Nike? Like, what's Nike about? What's their identity? It's like, okay, athleticism, um, I think they try to stand for inclusion, <laughs> whether or not you agree with some of these things, right? It's more, hang on, like we're we're going from a brand perspective. So, okay, athleticism, performance, um, you know, I'm a, like a strong performer or an elite performer, but they do try to stand for the everyday guy and that's where it's, or gal or person. So it's interesting, right? Because as companies grow and as, in, as we as humans, as adults grow, our identity can sometimes split and branch off into bigger and bigger things. As we see with Nike as a brand, it might've started as one thing and ended up as another thing. You definitely started as one thing and here you are today as something else. And so that's why I said identity shifts and it's really important to just take this as a snippet in time now and to look at where, who you want to be. So I think the core question of today's snippet when we talk about identity is who do I want to be? Because if we look at the past, and this is a core core tenant of coaching, right? Like coaching, we look at where we are, we look at where we want to be. We don't really meddle in the past too much unless it's like drawing resources from a successful past scenario or like some story or situation in the past that's going to inform the present or the future. But we're not sitting here like digressing into what happened in your past. It's just not the form. It's not the foundation of coaching. It doesn't mean there's not value in it. It's just not what we're doing here. So. In the same vein or with the same approach, I'd like you to just consider, okay, where are you today and who do you want to be going forward? Think about that in regards to your work. Of course, this is in the last episode. Please, if you want to write this down, if you kind of want to doodle around and do a brain dump, I think that's hugely valuable. Just start writing out some words, right? When I think about, okay, who do I want to be, right? It's like, it isn't just about work. Right away, so many other things come to my mind, and that's okay. I think that's really important. If you're talking about where you're headed in your work, think about who you want to be down the line. Think about what else is at stake, because I think the biggest mistake we can make is spending 40 years just thinking we want to be a successful business person and forgetting about the other areas of our life. That, to me, is a huge red flag, because if you are only a successful businessman or woman or 
You know, if you're only going to be a successful entrepreneur, hey, it does take that focus, that level of determination to get where you want to be. And I, if you want to be the top ranking of any sort of industry or any athletic event, like you've got to be dedicated. So I'm, I'm not here to kind of strike that down. But what I am saying is think about that. Because if you aspire to be number one, there's a lot you're giving up in the process. There's a lot of opportunity cost there. And that's okay. But I... I just want that to be a consideration, right? Who do you want to be? It's a such a simple thing. But really, it goes back to James Clear's work because it's like that's what's going to inform further down the logical levels. And no matter if you're just starting out your career, you're more advanced in your career, um, you're restarting your career, which is such a powerful time when you're kind of either pivoting or getting back after a bit of a break, this is a good question to ask. It's so easy to kind of feel like who you are right now isn't the person you want to be because you haven't been in the work game or you are switching positions, whatever. Like, well, if you're in a point of transition of any kind, this is a great one because you really do get to reinvent yourself. I love looking at identity stuff and delving into this. And if we were to work together, then, you know, we would definitely go further down the rabbit hole, but a very good preliminary opening of the gate to this particular dimension of logical levels is definitely who do I want to be? Because who am I? You're going to get answers that you're maybe not so proud of. Um, and that's important information, right? That's going to tell you, Hey, okay, here are the things that I'm kind of slacking on, which is very good stuff to know. And I'm please shine a light on that. So, you know, if, if you are going to do a bit of an analysis, you want to take this step further, do that, you know, answer the, who am I? And then answer the, who do I want to be in relation to that? That's really powerful because then you're saying, Hey, who have I been over the past? Let's say a couple months, right? Like who am I being lately? It's like, Oh, I'm being cranky. Like I haven't been very patient. I've been neglecting whatever, cleaning my house or my finances or my kids or having fun or relaxing self-care I've been avoiding responsibility at work, whatever, like whatever you're avoiding, this is a good chance to not on a task level, but from an identity level of who you've been showing up at. So think of this not so much as like, did you do the right thing in your last group meeting on Tuesday? Like this is way more about who are you being holistically and how do you feel you're bringing, what are you bringing to the table? right? Like how would people describe you in the past month? Because especially if you have long-term relationships, like if, if you're in any kind of partnership or like you have family, friends, like parents around, like people will, people will tell you, right? Like, Hey, something's off. Like you're not being you. So, you know, tap into that. I'm not saying let's necessarily listen to everybody around you, but just tap into this idea that who you are has definitely evolved throughout your life and you have every choice to continue to evolve it even further into somebody unrecognizable to who you are today. Like if you were to talk in a year from now, you could be somebody completely different if you decide that you're going to be somebody different, right? If you decide you're going to pick up and move to Texas, you decide that you're going to pick up and move to Zurich or Paris and you're going to do a language course or get a new job or join a new company or transfer offices. Like this can be the time today can be the day and you can decide, Hey, like I'm an adventurous, courageous person. And you can decide that right now. So I would encourage you to answer that question of who do I want to be? Get some really cool ideas about who that person is. And then join me for following episodes to get even more clarity about how it is that you're going to bring that version of you to life in the coming weeks. So thank you so much for joining me on this wonderful day to talk about identity. I get super passionate about that question. It's such a simple one, but I think it's life-changing if you take the time to really, really flush it out. So who do you want to be? I'm so glad that you're somebody that listens to this show. I'm really grateful that you're here and taking the time to listen. Hope you like the new format of a little bit shorter episodes. I think it's kind of cool little snippets that you can check out anytime. If you're liking these this series, then please do comment. Let me know so I know what's working. Your feedback is super important to me so that I can make this show great. And thanks again for listening. We'll see you again next time.